Chairman Cole, Ranking Member Lee, and esteemed members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to testify before you today on behalf of Free Press. In my testimony, I plan to cover three topics. First, I'd like to provide a consumer perspective on the consolidating telecom market in which these deals are being proposed. Second, I'd like to explain what it means to put this much control over our nation's spectrum market into the hands of one company. And lastly, I'd like to explain how the joint marketing arrangements would leave many of our nation's households facing monopoly conditions in the market for residential internet access. We've heard a lot about the spectrum crisis, but today I'd like to point out we have an equally large competition crisis. This is a crisis that consumers are already facing today as they get locked into more expensive multi-year bundles, while competitors are locked out of entering the marketplace to offer better alternatives. The market for wireless service is concentrated at the top, with Verizon and AT&T together controlling nearly 65% of the market share and capturing nearly 80% of the entire wireless industry's profits. To put this in perspective, this dwarfs the level of concentration that we see in the oil, banking, or airline industry. The market for at-home broadband service has long been a duopoly, and FCC data predict that most American households will have no other choice than their cable company for next generation internet access. These trends have real consequences for consumers. JD Power reports the average wireless bill in 2011 was $86. That's a 25% increase in just the last four years. The central theme that I'd like to get across here today is that, in the, that these market conditions will be made much worse if this deal is approved. For example, this deal will result in AT&T and Verizon controlling a combined 60% value share of all mobile broadband spectrum in America. The benefit here for Verizon is not just in using this spectrum, it is also in foreclosing other companies from using this critical resource to challenge Verizon's market dominance. Not all spectrum is created equal. The more high quality spectrum a carrier controls, the more market power it has, making it easier to mount a competitive challenge. Put simply, with better spectrum, cell towers can, can carry signals for longer distances so fewer towers are needed. So for a dominant firm like Verizon, with more spectrum depth than any of its competitors, acquiring more spectrum is not the only way to meet growing consumer data demand. Verizon could continue to build more towers, conduct spectrum swaps in congested areas, or use Wi-Fi offloading to carry traffic. Acquiring more spectrum is, however, the best way to ensure competitors cannot mount a serious challenge by using that spectrum to offer high-quality services at lower prices. If federal regulators are serious about protecting the public interest, they must act to preserve the limited amount of competition in the wireless market that exists today, and that starts with denying this license transfer. The spectrum sale is enough to tilt this transaction against the public interest in the wireless market. However, the joint marketing arrangements will also exacerbate consolidation in the residential broadband market. These agreements simply rep uh, represent a deal between these companies to stay out of each other's way in perpetuity. They put former rivals on the path to collaboration rather than competition, and they send a clear signal to Wall Street that the largest cable and wireless companies in America are aligned together, and it will be nearly impossible for any competitor to mount a viable threat in either market. Congress recognized the danger in these sorts of arrangements when it passed the 1996 Telecom Act. That act specifically bans local, local telephone companies and cable companies joining forces. That's because Congress intended to encourage competition between cable and telephone companies, competition that would be eliminated through these agreements. For example, these agreements eliminate the incentives for Verizon to aggressively market its fiber-to-the-home broadband service in markets where it competes head-to-head -head with cable companies. Competition benefits consumers when companies are trying to win subscribers from their competitors, not when they are offering to sign up their own customers for their rival services. In conclusion, I'd like to point out that the consolidation that we've been experiencing is no accident. It is not the hand of the free market. Rather, it's the outcome of public policy decisions that have unwound protections on competition and placed a disproportionate amount of our nation's most valuable spectrum into the hands of just two companies. There is no reason this pattern of poorly protecting the public interest has to continue. The DOJ and the FCC showed immense analytical skill and political courage in rejecting the AT&T T-Mobile merger. And if that was the down payment on future competition, preventing this proposed transaction should be the next installment. Thank you very much. I look forward to your questions.